In Afghanistan, the Taliban is getting stronger with every passing day. Its rise poses a security threat for the country, for the region and for India. And New Delhi's fears are already coming true. On Monday, there was an attack in the Herat province. The target was a dam built by India, the Salma Dam, located along the Hari River. The map on your screen shows you its, its exact location. This project is also called the India-Afghanistan Friendship Dam. In the year 2016, Prime Minister Modi himself attended the inauguration ceremony. It took $275 million, 1,500 workers and engineers, and more than 10 years to build this dam. And on Monday, in a matter of a few hours, it fell into the hands of the Taliban. According to Afghanistan's Khama News Agency, Taliban terrorists attacked the dam's checkpoint. At least 16 security personnel were killed in gun battle. The dam, its checkpoint and its equipment fell into the hands of the Taliban. This is one of India's most prestigious projects in this country. And this may just be the beginning. For weeks, Vion has been reporting on how the Taliban's rise poses a threat to Indian interests and how New Delhi has way too much to lose. For the record, India has invested more than $3 billion in Afghanistan. India has developed more than 400 projects in all 34 of its provinces. This includes schools, dams, hospitals, clinics, libraries, a sprawling parliament house. All this development, all this money, and now the Taliban is looking to regain control. The security situation is getting worse. The threat is aggravating every minute. Now, reports indicate that India is likely to bring back its citizens and officials living in Afghanistan. The process is currently under discussion. Multiple agencies will be part of this evacuation process. What we can confirm for you at the moment is the strength of the Indian presence in Afghanistan. We do not know the details of an evacuation plan or when it will be set in motion, but this is what we have. A total of 3,106 Indian nationals live and work in Afghanistan. This is according to the Ministry of External Affairs. India has an embassy in Kabul along with 500 people working at Indian consulates in Mazar and Kandahar. It's not going to be an easy task. The Taliban is advancing, killing those in its way. On Sunday, the secretary of Kandahar's governor was killed in a car explosion. And today, 20 people were killed in another blast at a Kandahar market. They're hijacking foreign projects, killing government officials, carrying out blasts at markets, forcing families to flee their homes, and putting the freedoms of Afghans at risk. But sitting in Qatar, the top brass of the Taliban, its top negotiators say that they are committed to ensuring peace. Listen to this. It is a negotiated settlement for Afghanistan. I see it, there should be negotiated settlement for the country because only in that case we can have a durable peace. It is our policy. Military approach will bring victory, but not a durable peace. The hypocrisy is astounding. So is the preparedness of the Afghan government to deal with it. On Monday, we told you how more than 1,000 Afghan troops had fled to Tajikistan, some without putting up a fight. Today, another video has emerged. It shows Afghan soldiers willfully surrendering to the Taliban in the country's Baglan province. You can see them shaking hands and happily embracing the Taliban. Well, that is not to say that everyone is evading battle. Look at these images now. They're from the Takhar province in Afghanistan's north. Government forces launched a counter-offensive here. They're trying to protect the capital city of Talikan. On Sunday, Taliban made a failed attempt to take control of the capital, but they faced strong resistance from these troops, who say that they will die fighting, but will never yield to the Taliban. I am a soldier of the National Army, and I will defend my homeland as long as a drop of blood remains in my body. 
I have been in the army as a soldier for five years and we will never lose to the enemy. The determination is moving, but such cases are few and far between. Afghanistan's neighbors are on edge. The Tajik government, for instance, has sent 20,000 troops to bolster the border with Afghanistan. Not to engage with the Taliban, but to protect its own frontiers. These troops will set up camps for refugees coming from Afghanistan, most of whom happen to be soldiers. The Tajik president, Emo Mali Rahman, is said to have made a flurry of international calls to raise concerns about the situation. This includes a telephonic conversation with Russian President Putin, who is said to have assured Tajikistan that Moscow will provide all necessary help to stabilize the border. Now, it is important to note that Russia operates one of its largest military bases in Tajikistan. This country is important. The Russian 201st military base in Dushanbe. It is equipped with tanks, helicopters, drones and ground attack aircraft. Earlier today, a training exercise was held here with military helicopters firing air-to-surface missiles. The Kremlin says this base would help stabilize the border with Afghanistan, both directly and through a regional security bloc. Russia also has a warning for the Americans. The Russian special envoy to Afghanistan, Zamir Kabulov, has warned the U.S. that the process of withdrawing troops from Afghanistan should not turn into a redeployment of the U.S. and NATO infrastructure to other countries in Central Asia. Meanwhile, India is engaging with all stakeholders. On Wednesday, India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar is expected to leave for Moscow. The situation in Afghanistan will top the agenda there. The two countries will chalk out a strategy to deal with the Taliban. We'll be tracking developments closely on that front. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.